Today I want to talk about the Accursed Kings series of books by Maurice Duron. They are absolutely amazing. I have five of the books, right? There are seven, but they're hard to get because they were originally written in French, so they've been translated. There is the first one, The Iron King, which they cover the fall of the Capuchin Kings in France. And, as you can maybe see at the top, this is the original Game of Thrones, and that's a quote by George R. R. Martin. And these books are so good. The only thing about them is that sometimes the translation is a bit off. They were written quite a long time ago. Let me check when they were written. Ooh, let us see, let us see. I think they were written in like the 50s, if I'm right. 50s or 70s. Copyright 1955, I was right. So they, they're a little old-timey. And then they've been translated as well, so sometimes they do come across as a little old-timey. So this is the first one in the series. It can be a little hard to get into when you're learning all the new characters' names and stuff, but it's not too difficult, and they have like a genealogy and stuff at the beginning, so you know who everyone is, and they also have, you know what you get in plays, where it tells you all the characters and what scenes they're in? So you can follow it pretty easily. The second book in the series, and my personal favourite so far, is The Strangled Queen. Ooh. I don't want to give too much away because they're so good and you don't see it coming and there's like queens having affairs, they end up in towers and the best thing is about these books is most of it's true. Then there is The Poisoned Crown. And this is really about the Game of Thrones, like you win or you die, and a mother vying to get her child, her daughter, to be queen, and how the three sons of the Iron King all die in turn. Very good. Now this one, the Royal Succession, deals with the fallout from the sons all dying, and you've got popes and conclaves and just everything. The best bit is though, there's a baby swap. The prince is baby swapped with the bastard child of a squire and like the minor daughter of like some noble house, which you know is the fiction element of the historical fiction. And then there is the she wolf of France about Isabella of Angoulême, the Queen of England, who goes and kills her husband with her lover. The last two books in the series are The Lily and the Lion and The King Without a Kingdom. And I haven't read these two, mainly because they're really hard to get in the UK and English where I live in quite a small city and there's only really two bookshops and it was just hard to find them. So I kind of gave up. I should have bought them online, I know. But, you know, then you get end up reading other books and I need to get back into it so I was thinking if I made this little vlog it would convince me to start rereading them because they're so good they're absolutely so good and like I've got the Iron King and the Strangled Queen on audiobook anyway so I was thinking maybe I could listen to some of them and then buy the last two books and do some reviews for you guys but before I go I am going to read the little insert at the beginning by George R. R. Martin. I don't know if that's focusing. Is it focusing? Ooh. Over the years, more than one reviewer has described my fantasy series, A Song of Ice and Fire, as historical fiction about history that never happened, flavoured with a dash of sorcery and spiced with dragons. I take it as a compliment. I have always regarded historical fiction and fantasies as sisters under the skin, two genres separated at birth. My own series draws on both traditions, and while I understandably drew much inspiration from Tolkien, Vance and Howard, and other fantasy series who, uh, who came before me, Game of Thrones and its sequels were also influenced by works of great historical novelists like Thomas B. Costain, Mike Worley Tree, you know when you read a word in your head and then you try to say it out loud and it just comes out like weird? Howard Ply and of course Maurice Durun. 
the amazing French writer who gave us the Accursed King series, seven splendid novels that chronicle the downfall of the Capitan Kings and the beginning of the Hundred Years' War. De Run's novels have not been easy to find, especially in English translations. The seventh and final volume was never translated into English at all. The series has twice been made into television series in France, and both versions are available on DVD, but only in French, and undubbed without English subtitles. Very frustrating for an English-speaking De Run fan like me, and me. The Accursed King has it all. Iron kings, strangled queens, battles, betrayals, lies, lust, deception, family rivalry, a curse from the Templars, babies switched at birth, she-wolves, sin, swords, doom, and a great dynasty. And straight from the pages of history. And believe me, the Starks and Lannisters have nothing on the Capuchins and the Plantagenets. When you're a history buff or a fantasy fan, Durin's epic will keep you page turning. It was the original Game of Thrones. If you like A Song of Ice and Fire, you will love The Accursed King. I love these books, but they are a bit old timely, like you have to get used to the way he writes and then of course on top of that you have to get used to the translation and maybe I pick up on it more because I speak two languages, but sometimes when things are translated they don't come out right or words get changed like I remember I was watching a movie with my dad because my dad didn't speak Spanish and he was watching it with the English subtitles and I was just watching it and I read some subtitles and it, like the words had been changed it didn't really fit one of the great things about these books as well is they're actually quite short you know like compared to A Song of Ice and Fire like they're good little paperbacks so you can carry them around like you know if you're going to work you want to read something on your lunch because they're all like about like 300 pages if I'm right, like this one's only 294 pages, you know, so you can get through them pretty quick. The later ones, like the She-Wolf, the Lily and the Lion and stuff like they're thicker, but they're still like nothing compared to like a Song of Ice and Fire book or even, you know, like a Harry Potter book, like one of the big Harry Potter books. So like, you're not putting this in your bag, taking it to work and being like, oh my God, it's so heavy. And people are asking you if you've got a brick in your bag or something. But I love this series and I don't think it gets enough recognition at all in the world and I'd love for people to start reading it. So let me know in the comments and stuff if you'd like me to do reviews of these because I really do recommend them for anybody to read. And I will be back to you soon. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. I know I was meant to put out my Catherine of Aragon part two video on the Alison Weir collection but I've been working loads this week. I came back off holidays from last week and I'm covering like 1800 shifts. So please don't get mad at me. Bye.